Alô? Alô? Hello? It is, what day is it? It's Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday, right? Yeah, I'm not going insane. It's definitely Wednesday. Hello? Yes, hello, chat. <laughs> Can't believe the first thing I do is I forget what day of the week it is. Can you believe that? I can believe that. But either way, we are here today. And uh, I guess I should start up the game. Because we have a new divine to get hatching. We do also have all of the event maps that I'm going to be showing you. And we do have the new seventh dragon that's been revealed to us now. So we can take a quick look at him before we delve into everything else. Because obviously the anniversary of DML is coming up very, very soon. Uh, it will be seven years of this game. Jesus, that is uh, seven years too many. <laughs> seven years too many. It's Tuesday. No, it's not Tuesday. You can't lie to me. I have a calendar on my PC. Don't lie to me. You can't lie to me about this. In fact, it's in the bottom right-hand corner. Do you see that? Ah! Actually, I don't know if that had anything weird in it. You're not allowed to see that. I've forbidden you from seeing that now. <laughs> Whoopsie poopsie. Am I out of VIP, by the way? Damn it. Hello. Hello, Jojo Abdullah. You're teaching Poseidon. Very cool. Yeah, I think I'm out of VIP tickets. That sucks, dude. Well, at least we have one for today, right? That That's that's a thing. So I guess we'll do that. But either way, it is Wednesday, my dudes. And uh, we have a, a divine to get hatching. I think I might need to make some space in my vault quickly, however. Because I my game is just... Oh, no, I do have a vault space. Lovely. I guess we need to throw in a random legendary that we don't care about in there then. Bye bye, Shade Brute. Get vaulted. Get vaulted, Shade Brute. But here we are, and it is time, I believe, to hatch another divine. But I guess we'll take a look at that seventh dragon very quickly. It is in our Discord server in the DML news section for anyone that hasn't seen it so far. Here it is, if you haven't seen the video quite yet. Um, if I full screen this quickly, you'll see that there's all the old dragons and then we got this new butterfly. Is this a butterfly? Is it a birthday cake? Wesam? You got the hermit? Lovely. Yeah, you seen this new dragon? This new pink fluff ball? Look at it. it. I don't know. It almost looks like it's got some weird ice creams on its head. I guess maybe it does, right? But yes, this is the seventh dragon and it will be coming very, very soon, I imagine, after this week. Because obviously we've got the Divine Fest this week still going. But then next week, we're probably going to get the anniversary event stuff. But we will be hopping back onto the Discord in a second when we want to take a look at those castle event maps. But it's icing. Yeah, I guess. I guess. But firstly, after that, we have this brand new divine, which is, of course... Koliada Chen. There she is. She doesn't have the baubles when she's in the baby form, but as soon as she gets into her adult form, then we get to see all of them. Then we get to see all of them. But there she is. Divine, water, and metal. You know, lots of people have been asking, you know, who should you take? Koliada or Poseidon? Because, you know, they're mainly there for divine and water. Uh, Koliada can be useful with metal, but a lot of people are opting to go with Void instead, just because you can zuck that way, which kind of makes sense, right? Yes, Harsh Pre, I see you. But anyway, the Koliada dragon brings tidings of warmth and light in the midst of winter, prompting Dragolandians in colder climes to celebrate. The unique look and feel of a New Year's sun is attributed to this divine. Isn't that cute? Isn't that just the cutest? But yeah, I, I kind of like Koliada. I have to say, out of all the dragons in this event, I'm not really too into any of them. Like, Amaterasu's okay, Koliada's okay. <clears throat> but I'm not really... Eh, they're like, eh. Apart from Gao. Gao's great. Gao's a great dragon. Hello, Rayhan. How you doing? But let's speed up Koliada here to, like, level 20. Just because why not? And plus we need the castle event currency. So uh, let's go. But yeah, all that we need to do now is get our hands on Gao. And I guess Isis as well. Because, you know, the Isis dragon 
Uh, I don't actually have it on Windows yet, so I get that. Yeah, thanks Google Chrome. But, yes, yes, what about it, Harsh Preet? Yeah, you can see in the adult form, we got those baubles now. We got the slender tail, very pretty, very pretty indeed. Very blue, very cool. DM over there sitting there with the Osiris dragon, who is another water divine. But Osiris has that shadow element, which we really don't care about. But I guess we'll quickly collect a castle event currency because we will be using the maps to help us out on level four. Because I'm at level four right now, which... Not super quick progress, but it could be worse, right? Could be much worse, so I'm not gonna complain. I guess I'll activate a second breeding den as well while we're here. And who do we want to breed for 300 points? It's Shard, isn't it? Is the Tezza Quaver Dragon good? Eh, not really. You can use it, but it's like... All things considered, if you had a different Earth Ancient, you'd probably want to use that because... You know, the other element on Tezzaquave is just not that great. But I guess we will throw a shard dragon in here for now. Get our points that we need for this, this level of the castle event. And then we'll go and do our battles quickly and then head on over to level 4 and take a look at those castle event maps. I hope that you got the elements that you need for the castle event stuff. That's all I'm saying. Because otherwise you're probably going to have a difficult time. Can you add me? In game, if you want to add me, my code is add2. 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 It's almost like it was a code that was meant to be given so that people would add it, right? Hello, fact. Fact child. And honestly, I haven't been doing very much arena because even though it does give us the currency for winning battles. I just cannot be bothered with Arena anymore. It's like I've completely given up on Arena, to be honest. It's like they're obviously just never gonna fix it at this point, so why bother? Gao or Citrine? That's a difficult one. That's a difficult one. Um, I, I think it's still Citrine in my heart of hearts, but Gao is fantastic. Do I have an Android account? Technically I've got two Android accounts, but I have not touched them in about one of them in about four years, and I haven't touched the other one in like a year and a half, I think, or like a year. So not really. <laughs> Technically I do, but not really. Hello VIP and Abia. Tessa Quave is your favourite in the game. You know, if you have a favourite dragon and you really want to use it, you do you. It's just, obviously, not all dragons are going to be as useful as others. Like, some of them might not have good stats, some of them might not have good elements. So, as long as you can accept that using any dragon you want is probably not going to give you the best team ever, like, there's no problem. Just be aware that if you want to use commons, you're going to have a bad time. Like, fine, you can use the commons, enjoy the commons, do what you want with the commons, uh, but you can't really do much with the commons, if we're being honest, you know? Can you complete the castle event? You'll be on level 5 at the end of today. You should be able to. I don't believe that level 6 has any extortionate costs, which we will take a look at that in a second, actually. But if you're on level 4 slash 5 at the moment, you should be fine to finish the event. Your favourite is Poseidon. Lovely. Hello, Mudkip. The dude used commons to max level. There's a few people that have done it. And, you know, as long as they know that their team is just not going to be very viable in a lot of situations, that, that you can use whatever dragons you want. However, it's a very different story if you're using, like, some of the worst dragons in the game and then you try and say that they're good. They're not. You know, let's not lie. You don't have Tezza Quaver, rip. You've just unlocked Poseidon, which of the dragons would you take next? I mean, if you could have gotten two Divines, I think it was better for most people to go for... If they didn't already have Chrono Aphrodite, to go with Amaterasu and Koliada, because at least then you basically get three Divines, right? Because you can get Amaterasu, Koliada, and then if you get the two Castle Event Epics, then you also get Chrono Aphrodite. That's if you could get at least two Divines out of the altar. If you didn't care about Chrono Aphrodite, then fine. But 
if you can choose any others now that you've already taken Poseidon, it really depends on what you need. Yeah, yeah, I've been through it before with common dragons. You can use them, but because commons can only use common sigils, it just, they, they, they end up getting screwed over way too much. Like, the reason why ancients and divines and everything else end up being so good is because they can use bless and the ancient skill and the healing along with like rare plus sigils. That's why they're good. They're not going to be good otherwise. Oh my goodness, more recruitments. Very cool. Yeah, if you want to use my code, it's here. Add to. Um, you could be recruit number 512. Wouldn't that be epic and awesome? Hello, Age of Attitude. Please do the dungeon and live every day. Oh god, I hate the dungeon though. I, I only did it during the event so that I could get stuff. Like uh, the divine tickets, but I have like no reason to do that now. Farming Frenzy is also on at the moment, so now's a good time to use your time skips and everything if you have them. So keep that in mind. Bonus food for right now. But anyway, we are heading on over to level 4 of this event. What's my favourite dragon? Citrine! But yes, we are heading over to level 4 here. And you can see I've already made my way somewhat through level 4. But we've got 3,000 currency. And this is where I want to show you the, the maps that have been put together. I was actually going to put them together yesterday. But my back hurt and I was in a foul mood. So I didn't end up doing it in the end. <laughs> Uh, but we do have all the maps on the Discord server in the DML event guide section. Uh, you can see from level 1 up to level 6, I believe Sam made these. So, uh, you know, shout outs go to him or wherever these eventually, like, the, the actual numbers themselves are calculated by, you know, individuals. But usually the maps themselves come from the DML wiki. But, like, we've got level 3 here and we've got all the chess paths there. But... I'm looking at level 4 right now, and we've got these paths here, and so we've got the first one, and the cheapest one overall is going to be going up to this top left chest, and then over in the yellow path to number 2, and then we're heading over to number 3. And that is essentially what I am going to be doing right now. So I've already headed over to that chest, and that chest, so following the map, we're going to be heading over here. Can I add you? You have to add me. But remember, if you want to add people in DML, you're going to have to make sure you're on the same platform and server as them. But now on level 4, the only other way that we can go is over to this right-hand side. And then if we reopen up a little image file here, you'll see that the cheapest one is the closest one. And then number 5 is that green path at the furthest point. So we're going to go to the left first, and then we'll head over to the other chest path afterwards if we need to we're hoping oh god we didn't even one shot him that's not good but i'm hoping for another level that isn't a five out of five requirement how do you pronounce your full youtube channel name quackalax how many hours to hatch an ancient it's like nearly four days isn't it that's with vip anyway damn it every single level apart from level three is going to be a five out of five isn't it I can already foresee it coming. Why game? Why hath you done this to me? So it looks like the final chest on level 4 is going to be this one over here. So uh, that should be neat. Very cool. Very epic. But uh, the other levels that we've got is obviously going to be level 5 and 6. Because level 4 is fine for me. But we've also got level 5 and 6 that we need to go through. And so let's take a look at those very quickly. We've got this map here. And we also start off in the bottom left hand corner on level 5. And then we'll be heading to the north first. Top right. Bottom left. Top left. Bottom right. That's going to be the ordering for level 5. If you can remember that. I, I'll try and remember that. But we've always got the image files here. And then does anyone else remember this map? level six map because i've seen this like seven million bajillion times now uh but this is the christmas tree map and essentially it is just going up the christmas tree is the cheapest apart from the beginning so rather than going to the very first chest go to the second third then first chest and then just make your way up the christmas tree and you'll see that these image files do have all of the costs on the screen as well 
or in the image file so you'll be able to see that each of them are probably around about 3,000 up to 4,000 event currency to get there. So 4,000 event currency per chest really isn't too bad, right? How many resets can you skip? Probably, judging by past events and how this event's played out before, probably about two days worth of resets absolute max. So uh, yeah, you can't really miss one a day, can you? Not, yeah, not really. Not really. Doesn't sound like I'm sick. I feel like trash if it makes you feel any better. But yeah, it's normally like a day and a half to two days. It depends on your key luck as to how many resets you can skip. But generally it's around about two days spare that the events give you. But obviously if you can avoid missing resets, try not to miss them. That's the easiest way to make sure that you don't. Kuwait Cools. What? The maps are useful. I mean, yeah, the thing is, even though the keys are random, the idea is that if you go to the cheapest paths first, at least it gives you a slightly boosted chance of, you know, not screwing yourself over as much. So that's why people make them. That's why I always try and share them, regardless of where they're from. Normally, I used to be the one to make them, but, you know, when you're busy or things happen, especially, like, I was going to make him, and then it was like, well, well, I'm in a foul mood. I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> and then someone else made them. Thank goodness for us. <laughs> you just barely enjoy playing DML, but you like watching other people. You know, I can get that, especially in games that are generally can, you know, especially timer-based games. A lot of people would consider them quite boring to actually play. Because what you're actually playing, a lot of the time you're actually just waiting, right? So you can watch someone else actually play the game. Isn't that cool? <clears throat> Is Poseidon good for a first divine dragon? Again, he's okay. Um, ideally, he would have had another element that's not void, but I don't think you can really avoid that when the only other option is either water void, like those are the water options right now, water void or water metal. Though neither of them are particularly fantastic, but it is really important to at least get water on your team and also really important to get divine on your team. So taking Poseidon is a good way to get a good range of elements and sometimes voids used in a lot of the castle events as well. Oh, and I forgot to mention that with those castle event maps, um, they do also have the elements required for each battle, but at the same time, you can also open up the DML wiki page and it'll also show you the elements required for each battle on there. Depends on what whatever you find easiest. Personally, I find it quite easy to just take a look on the image files, but they are quite small, so like you'd have to zoom in to see them. But if you don't want to just look at the required elements on there, you can take a look at the wiki as well. And like level six has a lot of shadow, plant, metal. Level five has a lot of energy, metal. So it's a very metally themed event. So I hope you've got metal available. Can you make like an element tier list video? I mean, I guess, but there's like certain elements that are just essential on a team that you can't really not use. And then there are some elements like Legendary that just, the level 6 upgrades are just the worst. Like, Light is useful, but Light's level 6 upgrades are pretty bad. And I only just realised that we have Sail Whale. It's, it's the Walmart's hot sister back with her terrible, terrible deals. Now, they do have breeding tokens for dragons like Spruce, and they do have a breeding token for the Tower Dragon. But you've got to remember with these offers here, they call them offers, but you're basically buying a chance. So the Tower Dragon, for example, you'd be paying 199 gems for one day of breeding chance, which is not very much. This is an extortionate cost, considering it was just out for the whole month. And I guess their reasoning would be, yeah, well, it was available for a whole month free, so it's your fault if you didn't breed it. But, like, you have to be really careful with these breeding bundles because, again, there's no guarantee you're actually going to breed this dragon. You're only paying for a chance at breeding it. So you need to know what the best combos are still. And then you need to actually try and breed it. And we're in the middle of a castle event. So this is super duper bad. Look, that's the combo there, fire, wind, earth, and water. 
which obviously you can work out that from the breeding guides and everything that we've done before, but 4% chance? I guess 4% isn't too bad, but it's also not too fantastic either, so uh, yeah, that's kind of concerning. It's kind of concerning. You've collected the key for level 4 of the Divine Event? Nice. Again, it is random where you'll find the key that's like this level. I'm not going to find it until my final chest because woe is me. But some people do end up finding the key in their first chest or their second chest. It's just the earlier chests have a very, very low percent drop rate of you finding the key. So that's why usually, usually you will have to, you will have to open up more than three chests on every level. Usually. Would I like to see a buff for legendaries? I would, because right now there's just no reason to use them. Like, at all. Like, you don't gain anything from using legendaries on a team anymore, just because Divine and Ancient are so much better. It's like, you could use legendaries, but then you just need to replace them anyway. And legendaries, you have to spend gems on the third element, and you have to upgrade them, the enchantment is harder than upgrading epics, so overall, why would you do it? I know that lots of people get misled that play this game or say they used to play this game years ago. And then they come back now and they're like, oh, I'm going to use legendaries. It's like, that that was probably not a good idea. Just being honest, it was probably not a good idea for you to add that legendary. And it was a super bad idea for you to actually upgrade it. What's your name in DML? You don't add people via their names, you add them via their codes. And my code is add two. Is Kothes, Gemini, Alpha, and Nezra a good team? It has a legendary in it, so no. No. I'm, I'm sorry, that's that's the honest truth. Like, you need earth, you need water. And you need AoE elements. Like, you can't not have that. But at the same time, you can't really use legendaries in a good team. Because one, you need two blessers really to have consistent dungeon runs. But you also need an ancient so that you can buff all of your... All of your shields and all of your healing. So, you, there's no real way to fit a legendary into your team. There's, there's no fitting legendaries into a good team. That's just the way that DML be. What breeding do you use to get all the castle event points? If you want to know the, the best things to breed for the castle event, that's also in our event guides channel. For example, every time we've had a different change to the points. Actually, let's take a look at this one because I think they're using the old breeding table. Um, maybe I accidentally went for more points than I needed to. I probably could have bred a Lumino dragon earlier. Oh well, doesn't matter. Uh, but this is the breeding table here. It's also in that event guides channel. You'll see that there's the breeding time, VIP breed, the points per breed, and the recommended offspring. So we did take these from the DML wiki because at the top of every single one of their castle event pages and event pages that have this, they include this at the top. So you can take a look at the dragons and how many points they'd give you. So for example, for 416 points, that's what Shard would give. Or for 333 points, that's what Lumino would give. And then 583 points you'd get for breeding Missile or Nightmare. And it tells you what their breeding time is with regular breeding and VIP. So I believe it's using the old table formula because during some events, they just change it for no reason. And the breeding points tallying is different. So, I believe this is the one that's currently up to date. Uh, anyone can confirm whether that's true or not, but I'm pretty sure this is the actual point table. But Lumino and Mist on level 4 will probably get you the points that you need, and then from that it'll be Shard Plus. A lot of people end up using the Jungle Dragons later on, because that's got 9 hour, 36 minute, and you can probably make it work with two breeding dens. If you've only got one breeding den, you're not going to be able to finish off all of the the points in every single reset on the later levels. What is your 23rd most favourite dragon? I couldn't even think of 23 dragons that I like, to be honest. Couldn't even think of 23 dragons that I like.
Yeah, for sigil contest, the actual best sigils are still purity daredevil because they they don't force you to take a hit of damage, which means that you get a higher point score. Let's hope that they use their shock on our middle dragon here, by the way. But yeah, for sigil contest, it's still purity daredevil for that reason. Now, do I think that everyone should still use purity daredevil? Probably not in general, if you want to have a good time in the dungeon. It's like, you can use Purity DD, but you're not going to have a good time in the dungeon. It's Purity DD is mainly for map completion. It can be useful in Arena, although not as much anymore. And yeah, it's, it's mainly just campaign, but it's really not going to help you out in dungeon. Which is the reason why everyone takes Wonder Acceptance, because Wonder Acceptance is useful in everything, and it's still pretty good for Sigil Contest, right? What would you use more, Momotu or Nezha? Um, depends on the team, because again, I would highly recommend you use two Divines in a team, but if you need an Ancient that has Water or Earth, then use Momotu. Purely situational. Hello, Kevin. It's like any time anyone says, is this dragon good? It's like, if it's a divine or an ancient, it completely comes down to your your other dragons. Like, no singular dragon is going to be the best in the game. It depends on your full team. So it's like, you could have an, an Oyar dragon or a Bahajir, right? But if your team just sucks in general, you're not going to get any use. So you need to have a good team. It's not just one singular dragon that's going to be the the big beast and is going to win you everything in the game. That's not how it works. Not with sigils anyway. When do I think I will get one meal? One meal what? One million crisps? That would be nice. Which ancients would I want to return? Ah! And, I mean, I'd like to see Amroja come back for other people that don't have it. I'd love to see the Exception Ancients come back, like Bahajir Oya. I didn't manage to get them the first time that they were available because my life schedule at the time just meant that I used to miss out most weekends on playing the game. So obviously DML's on PC for me, right? Which means that I can't take my PC physically everywhere with me. So Ancient events just used to be impossible for me. Which is the sad reality of this game. Some people just have to stop playing because the game just requires too much all the time of people. But I would love for them to return in some fashion. You know, like we've got Freya returned, Hathor returned, Chrono Aphrodite's come back. So I'd love to see some decent Exception Ancients come back. That would be nice. You want me to get one mil subs? Why? Subs don't really mean anything. You can have, like, 500,000 dead subs, it doesn't help you with anything. What what's what does it help if you're not actually helping someone or advising someone? Like, sub count doesn't really mean much in that sense. Obviously, it means that more people are subbed to your content, and that means it goes in more people's recommended feeds. But in general, there's not really any proper gain to having more subs aside from that. Like, sub count's not really the main thing that you look at. So it doesn't matter to me. When do you think you'll blah 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 blah? I just reread that. You don't need sleep, you need answers. Predict primal masteries. Oh god. Yeah, if you didn't know, it, they have actually mentioned something about primal dragons in the event dialogue for this event. Now, does that mean that they're going to add a tier of dragons beyond divine and ancient? Possibly. Could it just be them randomly throwing out words and just talking about some lore-related thing? Yes. There's no way we'll really know until they actually announce it, but they have spoken about some sort of primal dragons existing. Which is weird, because, you know, the ancients were supposed to be like the beginnings of dragons, right? They were supposed to be like the gods, the stars. So what would prime- Oh god, I accidentally turned on one time speed. That was disgusting. I almost vomited. Ugh. But yeah, we don't know at this point what's happening regarding those. It's worrying. 
you played for three years and you didn't get a single divine free to play. You should have been able to, especially three years ago, because they used to hold uh, calendar events. So you should have been able to get at least one free to play divine back then, because all that you used to have to do then was just log in. Does anyone else remember calendar events? They were nice, weren't they? Do you think we'll ever get those again? Probably not, right? <clears throat> Ancients, but more stats. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm worried about. That primals are just like these are these are ancients, but super good. In which case, the Emroaches and the Bahajirs and the Gloms and everything else will end up being useless. And once again, everyone will have a big moan and a big complain. Oh god, he one shot me. But will anything actually get done? It'll be the same thing as when Shadow and Light got added, and then when Divine got added, and then when Ancient got added. So nothing will really ever change. Oh my god, Phoenix. Phoenix, you became a greater ducker. OMG. OMG, thank you, Phoenix. Thank you. I've not really done much with the memberships recently in recent days. I'll be honest, but, you know, it is something that I've been thinking about. Especially with the amount of content that I actually record but never upload. There's a lot. There is a lot of stuff that I record but never actually upload and edit. So maybe. Maybe we will uh, get back on that grinding member train eventually. But I appreciate you joining us here, Phoenix. What stage am I in for the castle event? I'm currently on level 4. I'm going to need to open up my final chest on level 4 because so far I'm at 2 out of 2, 5 out of 5, 4 out of 5 and then it's going to be another 5 out of 5 on level 4 here and then we will be on to level 5 then level 6 so we will be hoping for some nice RNG on level 5 and 6 but we will we will have to see I'm not holding my breath I'm, I'm used to having to 5 out of 5 a few castle events by this point does not surprise me Isis, Coliada, and Clay are a good team. It's okay for now because it sounds like you're using Clay because you don't have like an Ancient to use, in which case Clay's a fine option. Obviously you'd be looking to add an Earth Ancient in that case, so I hope for your sake that we actually do get an Ancient Earth Dragon in the next event. They might bring back some old Ancient Earth Dragon. Like we got Momotu last time, right? No. Not Momotu, was it? What's his name? The fire one. It's not Momotu. I'm going insane. I can't remember his name. I, I genuinely cannot remember his name. Am I going insane? I might be going insane. Do I see him in here? Not you. Ah, that's it. Molem. The, the, the M's. The M's are messing with me. Molem. We did get Molem come back last time is what I was saying, right? So we might get a, an Earth Ancient return in the same way. That's what I was trying to say. Jesus. <laughs> Come on, brain. As soon as I saw, as, as soon as I said Momotu, I was thinking, no, it's not Momotu. Where's your brain going, me? Oh, I guess we got more sigil fights to do. I didn't actually gem this, did I? Molim. The fire guy. You should have known as soon as I said the fire guy, right? <laughs> you think there's going to be one primal dragon, higher stats, exception divine of legendary? You don't know. The thing is, if we got a an ancient divine legendary dragon, it wouldn't even be that good. I mean, unless the stats were ridiculous, right? Like, you're still going to get use out of the, uh, the ancient and the divine. So it's not going to be trash. But, like, the legendary, as it stands right now, would only hinder the dragon. Because it's like, imagine if you needed a dragon to fill out and you just needed a useful third element and it was legendary. It's just not. It's just not. It's not useful. You remember when Andy carried? I remember. That was many moons ago now. Remember when I had like seven dragons all at the same level? That was nice, wasn't it? And then they brought out the, the nightmare campaign and I wanted to finish the new campaign and we finished it in 20 minutes. Anyone else remember finishing the new campaign in 20 minutes? Are we ever going to get a campaign that doesn't take 20 minutes? Like, I get it for new players. Like, players that are still making their way through the campaign. Like, it seems like it takes a long time, right? Like, you got to do all of these battles and all of these battles and all of these battles. But when you're at the point when you have, like, level 100 plus dragons, it's just... 
There's barely anything left. There is nothing left. <laughs> and Kamikaze, thank you for joining us here today. Appreciate you joining us, Kamikaze. You are two pieces away from Furnace. Rip. That's a big rip. You played Dragon Mania Legends for four months and you got four legendaries? Nice. Keep breeding those dragons of the month and such. Like, they might not be the most useful dragons for teams, but they're still useful for collector points. And they're also useful for the general yearly collection, right? Can you tell me how to be better like being level 100? The player level in DML actually doesn't mean anything. That may seem weird to some people, but back when player level used to unlock stuff, I mean, it does unlock some things, not very much, but it used to have some importance. But these days in DML, it actually doesn't matter what your player level is, because most of the new player things and unlocks in general, they're not tied behind that anymore. They're tied behind Dragon Collector milestones. So like, you know, the, the level 6 upgrade for Metal, uh, actually unlocking elements is all hidden behind here. So your player level doesn't help you with any of this. So if you look at someone and they have a high player level, that doesn't actually mean anything. Like, that's not me trying to say that higher <laughs> level players are dumb. Oh, Jaguar, thanks for joining us, by the way. But, like, it doesn't actually assist you in the game. Player level is just an extra thing that happens while you're doing everything else. And Heavenly Swan, thank you for joining us as well. It's mainly about making sure that you have a good team put together so that you can get all of the good dragons out of things like castle events and dungeon mainly these days, but player level doesn't really help you. Now, dragon collecting does because you can get all of those milestones quickly and especially if you manage to get a divine like right now as a new player. You need to get your level 6 masteries unlocked, like, as soon as possible, because otherwise your Divine Bless just won't be very good. Because the reason that every single skill that I talk about in DML for the dungeon is good is purely because of the level 6 upgrade. Like, you'll see that my Ikaz Dragon has Mass Leech, Hot Coals, Burnout, and Nezha, for example, has Mass Blessing, Tombstone, Restore. And the only reason that it's good is because of these level 6 upgrades. Otherwise, your team's just going to be kind of sucky. So, even though I say, yeah, get this dragon and your team will be better, that is with the context of they need their level 6 skills. I keep getting notified by another game. Smanglon? Smanglon? What a name? I actually love that name. Smanglon. Sounds like some final boss. Am, am I the only one that thinks that? Smanglon. <laughs> and trend fuck. Oh god, I hope that YouTube doesn't think that I just swore there. I can't I can't say that name without it sounding like a swear word. Either way, thank you for joining us. Um <laughs> Damn it, Vietnamese people! You you have very square sounding names sometimes. But yeah, legendary dragons, the main way that I am, in, I am being phoned. I'm sure if they name me, they'll phone back. <laughs> but you, you just got to hear my uh, my phone ringtone there. Don't worry about it. We'll be there soon, phone ringtone people. Phone me back if it's important. See, that's the that's the way that I avoid um, spam callers. Because you know how sometimes it doesn't come up as scam on your phone? If you just let it ring out, they don't ring you back. Sure, I may end up screwing over someone that actually needs to contact me immediately, but eh, if they call twice, I know it's important, you know? <laughs> Manzor, hello. Fossil Dragon in Dungeon is coming with acceptance sigil and very irritating. Yes, that's, the, that's actually the reason why uh, dragons that have void can be quite useful. And Radu, thank you for subbing, my friend. Does water element healing scale off of dragon level or attack? It's, it, the, the level of the dragon, all things considered, is meaningless. It's about their base stats. The reason why we talk about dragon levels is because obviously the higher their level, the more stats they gain. 
But all things considered, it's uh, the actual the, the attack stat of the dragon that matters. Obviously, the health just makes them tankier. But things that, like, the blesses and the... All of the buffing and everything, it is based on the attack stat of your dragon. So that's actually a thing that makes Nezha quite bad. Because Nezha actually has a really low attack stat. And that's because Nezha has, you know, earth and water, which means they don't gain a lot of attack. And it also means that the bless is affected, which is actually kind of big. But at the same time, Nezha had the elements that I needed at the time. Nezha is still useful. You just have to, uh, you just have to put them into a team where they're not too mismanaged in terms of the overall stats on the dragon. What dragons do I want to be brought back? Like I said before, I'd love for dragons like Emroja, Bahagia, Oya to come back for players that don't don't have any of those exception dragons. And plus, I'd like to get my hands on a couple of them as well. But at, on, at the same time, there's a lot of dragons that are like bundle only that I'd love to see come back to the game. Will they ever do that? Probably not, because they have a, a section of dragons that just seem to stay as bundles only. Like if you've ever seen some of the legendary bundles that they pop in for events, those dragons just end up staying as bundle only dragons like forever. But I'd love to see some of them not be like that. That would be neat. How did you make free get two times dungeon stepping stones? If you weren't aware in the dungeon, a way that you can get lots of bonus stepping stones is by not using your main team. And by that I mean not your main three dragons, because some people use like six dragons plus in the dungeon for this reason. But you'll see that when Nezha takes out a dragon, you just get the, the basic amount of dungeon stepping stones. However, if we had Apollo, which we did at the start of this, when Apollo takes out a dragon, he gets three times the amount because he's my seventh dragon. So you'll see that your top three give you one times KO bonus. Well, the bonus of the stepping stones anyway. And then the fourth, fifth, and sixth dragons only give two times. And then the seventh dragon onwards gives three times. So that is the reason why I use Apollo at the beginning. Because Apollo holds acceptance, which means he still gets the divine buff. And it means that I can get at least some bonus, some bonus KOs, some bonus points using him. You want all the dragons in the game? Oh, good luck. You won't do it unless you pay lots of money. And that's not just me being mean for the sake of it. You actually can't. You cannot get a good portion of the dragons in this game unless you spend money. Yes, hello, Kenzie Chen. OP dragons. Yeah, unfortunately, my team is far from optimal. I wish that I had the ability to redo my team because even though my team can be really useful during like fire dungeon weeks, it was just sort of a team that I sort of had to have so that I could. Oh, damn it, I didn't bless. God help us all. Uh, but... It was just a team that I sort of had to use to finish off the Nightmare campaign and do Arena. And also Erlang Shen having Void and Metal can be really useful for some castle events. But overall, I would love to be able to like throw Amroja and possibly some other Divines into my team. Like, Nessa has too many roles in my team. Having a dragon that has three roles that are essential is just, it doesn't work out as well as you'd hope. During plant dungeon weeks, my, my team gets toasted. Absolutely toasted and roasted. Now, Erlang Shen having void can be really useful in some situations, but this team has a very specific way that it has to operate. And, uh, I could make this team much better if I could add, like, one or two other dragons. But obviously I don't have the resources to do that right now. Is Coliada good for the dungeon? Uh, again, Coliada can be useful, but it depends. You'd need to have a proper team put together with Coliada. So since Coliada's got Divine and Water, you'd need another Divine, you'd need an Earth user, and you'd need an AoE user. 
and ideally an ancient as well. But my dragons are level 115 with four stars. The enemies are level 166. That's 162, 155. But this panda dragon's level 166. Which, you know, if you are ever trying to do long dungeon runs, especially during burnout and void weeks, you really should be checking every single dragon to see what their level is and what their level six upgrades are. I just don't because I don't care enough. YOLO. Especially this week because, you know, I've already gemmed the dungeon runs that I need to. So I'm just, you know, hitting dragons, not really paying attention to the tasks either. Whereas during the fire week, it was like every single kill, check the task. Check the tasks again. Do it 700 times. Redo the dungeon like 50 times. And there was no breaks. There are no breaks on the DML pain train. You're getting 2.5k steppy stones every brawl, but shield irritates and the brawls take 30 plus minutes. That is unfortunately inevitability. When you do get a really good dungeon team put together, the worst thing is the fact that the dungeon runs take forever. Especially if you're really trying to min-mask on the tasks. Like, I'm not min-maxing on the tasks right now because it's mind-numbing. But on the weeks that I do, the dungeon runs can last like 15 plus minutes. And depending on your team, they could last, again, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I don't know about anyone reaching an hour, but possibly. But it takes a very long time. You have to put in a lot of time, energy into it. And it can just be a massive pain. You want other examples for dungeon teams? Just use the formula. The formula of the elements that you need. And you can put together technically any team that you want. Remember, you need Earth, Water, AoE, Divine, and Ancient. Those are the key things that you need for a dungeon team. You don't, you don't need any other element as an essential thing, but it does help. Like some people like having void and energy for the burnout slash zucking effect. You don't have to have them, but especially during shield weeks, they will help you a lot. Did I watch Spider-Man? No, I actually have free cinema tickets that I got from somewhere. And, oh wow, he died to that. Jesus. I do have uh, free cinema tickets. I haven't used them yet. I thought it was going to get cancelled due to COVID, but they're not taking any restrictions seriously here, so everything's just sort of still open. I thought that things would have closed. So it's just I don't want to book it and then it get cancelled, you know. So, so far I've not seen it. Because that's the movie that I was going to end up going to see. Maybe soon. Maybe soon. Nez has Stardust and Loki. Loki's not really going to help you in that team, if I'm being honest. Loki... Loki has suffered greatly. Because again, Planet and Shadow used to be some of the powerhouse elements. But since we... Since we're now at the point where sigils just have overtaken the meta, it doesn't really help. It just doesn't really help you. So ideally you'd need to get rid of that Loki dragon and replace it with something that does help you for dungeon runs and such. It'd be so cool if you could take back the resources used in a dragon but it gives back like 70%. Honestly, if they gave a reset button, it'd be preferable if it was 100%. But even if it was like 90% or you only got back like 80-70% of the resources back from using it, players would definitely still use it and it would, it would definitely make the game a lot more enjoyable and allow people to actually make good teams. Because as it stands now, say you've got a player that doesn't really understand what's going on, they upgrade a bunch of legendaries or epics or even uncommons, and then suddenly they're stuck and they can't really do anything with with what they've got anymore because the game punishes you for doing lots of different things. It punishes you for only using one dragon at max level to try and finish the map because then you'll suffer in the dungeon and castle events. It punishes you by using many dragons because you'll pretty much never be able to get enough enchantment mats because you'll never get up in the arena. It's like no matter what you do in this game, you're just punished for your choice. 
you know, rather than feeling like, oh yeah, this is just a different way of playing the game, you're just punished in a different way. And there is like no in between. So that's the reason why the advice I give, it's about you suffering the least. In the least or the fewest ways possible. Uh, because otherwise you're going to have a very painful experience in this game. And that's just reality. I think a reset button is very, very much needed. It's something that people have been asking for for a very long time now. But you know what? Something else that players have been asking for for a long time? Better farms! Like, how long have we had level 4 farms now? And they added an update that gave you bonus clan food but they're still not as good as spring cherries and squarey berries, so why would you ever use them? We've needed farm upgrades for such a long time. It's been like three years now. And we, now that we have a higher max level cap, the grand majority of people need this upgrade. But then again, while we have Arena, which still screws over everyone, uh, I don't really know what everyone expects, to be honest, because you know, people just aren't getting enough mats from this arena anymore. So, enchanting divines and ancients past, like, level 2 is just not a thing for most people. Co is Coliada, Candy Cane, and Clay a good team? Uh, it's okay for now, while you've only got one divine. It, it's okay. It's okay. And is Housk, Artemis, and Ares good for a dungeon team? I would say overall no. You do have two divines and you do have water, but I think Artemis being the only healer, I don't know, the team can be okay, but at the same time, where's your AoE? You know, you need that AoE in there. It would be manageable, but I don't think it's fantastic. There's no ads for me, that's because I am... I've made payments in this game. I am VIP 20. I am indeed VIP 20. You need a non-pay-to-win Habitat Island. You don't want to spend any money. That is another issue at this point because, like, we got we got through most of this by just upgrading our habitats, right? By using enchantment mats. And that's another problem with the arena being the way it is. We're getting less mats on average now, unless you are doing fights, like, all the time in the max league. Which means that upgrading habitats is more difficult now, because we don't have all of the extra mats to do so. And that means that people are going to be more incentivized to buy the islands. I think it was all pretty obvious and pre-planned that they were trying to force this. But it's like, I am not going to pay £8 for an island, and I am certainly not going to pay £16.74p for an island. That's ridiculous. No way. I know they do it in other collecting scumbag mobile games. It doesn't mean this one needed to do it, but people will still do it. But for now, I'm just getting through barely with habitats on other islands. I'm going to end up running out soon enough. Like, when you start getting to, like, 750 plus dragons, I'm not quite there yet. But that's when it starts to become a real ache trying to find the space. You finally made a live. Hello, Dallas. Can Isis and Coliada be together? They can. That's one thing about this castle event, or these castle events in general that have been happening. Isis is actually ideal in a lot of ways because, you know, we've got Divine on there and Fire. Some people are also a fan of using Wind in the dungeon so that, you know, you can reduce the one-shot potential. But Isis having that Fire element along with Divine, if someone, say, was brand new to the game and didn't have any Divines, then they could pick up, say, Isis, plus they could go and pick up Poseidon. Or if they just like the look, they could pick up Coliada. Or if they wanted to go for Chrono Aphrodite, they could get Coliada and Amaterasu, right? But rather than Amaterasu, it's probably better for people to go with Isis, because where Amaterasu does have Light, which is technically the better AoE, it's not as good for doing weak attack quests. So a person could pick up Isis plus Coliada or Isis plus Poseidon and then the only dragon that they'd need to get from that point would be an ancient earth dragon. So like if we took a look at all of the ancient earth dragons, this is what we've had so far. 
but if you're a brand new player you'd just have to hope that either one of these returns in the next ancient event or you'd have to hope that a new earth ancient comes out in whatever the, ne the next ancient event might be is it going to be is it going to be uh, energy it could be an energy ancient event which case that would be an energy earth ancient which honestly i don't think would be too bad all things considered that would probably be okay for players but that's just one potential team the only downside to a team like that would be that you'd only have one healer still which is not fully ideal but say they brought someone like um Mamotu back you could have a decent team so there's a lot of things you got to consider and it mainly comes down to what they actually make available to players but you know having two divines one with earth and one i mean one with water and one with fire is a good start we need me to complain enough to have another apollo situation oh god is that gonna be the new hashtag hashtag reset button i don't know if it'll work oh actually i think we've got some tickets to use here we are open up some tickets or open up some te tests open up some chests using tickets my goodness me i'm still not recovered my brain doesn't work my body is in agony pain woe is me is Emroja, Erlang, Shen, and Ra a good team? Uh, there's no water. No. No, Nino. You, you desperately need water. One of the main things that you really need. If I had to say the, the absolute essential elements, even on top of the essential elements, the first ones that you need to get are divine and water. Without those, you won't have a dungeon tape. You absolutely need water in there. Is Stardust, Coliada, Emerald a good team? It can work for the short term, but obviously you'd want to look to replace Stardust and Emerald at some point. Uh, and Vic, you said you're new, you have an Agave at level 26, non-enchanted orange, and also non-enchanted tribal. Give you some tips. Best tip I can give you is try and breed new dragons. Get your, if you're a new player, get your dragon collector points up. Try and get as many divines as you can and ancients from the various events that come in because even though you won't be able to use divines properly until they get to level 30 and they get fully upgraded, you still want to have as many as them as possible so that you have options for a team. That is the best thing that I can suggest to you. Genuinely. Oh look, it's Toucan! It's a toucan bundle, that's what that notification was just then. But yeah, new players, get your dragon collector points up. Breed new dragons, collect new dragons, get some divines, get some ancients. That's the, the most important thing for you to do. Genuinely. Do I have a dragon at level 120? No, because that would only make my dungeon runs worse. Because remember, dungeon, it scales based off of your highest dragon ever. So I really don't want to unbalance the team even more than it already is. You brought spruce. Well, as long as it makes you happy, that's the main thing. Can you get a fairly good team without spending money? Oh yes, you can do it free to play. You might not get the exception ancients and divines every time, but you can definitely get a good team free to play. It's possible. Make a video with dungeon team examples. I already did that like a month ago. You can go and find it actually. I can find it for you right now. That way you know what video I'm talking about because I did give some examples here in this video how to make a good dungeon team in DML. I did actually give a few examples of good dungeon teams and the essential things that you'll need in a dungeon team. So if you want to take a look at some examples of teams, like right here you'll see that I gave a team example for a new player. I also gave a team example for like Technically, one of the best dungeon teams that will ever exist right now. Technically. But there's a lot of different examples and things and knowledge that I go through in that video. So, again, it's already it already exists. <laughs> it already exists, so you can go and see that. Uh, Koliada and Roja and Chrono Loki, a good team. We got Koliata and Roja Chrono Loki. What are Chrono Loki's elements again? Sometimes I just don't remember. Uh, because especially with the like Chrono Dragons, uh, I think I've 
intentionally forgotten a lot of that. Oh, that's right, he's uh, firing energy. Yeah, honestly, Coliardus, um... Yeah, Coliata and Roger and Chrono Loki. It's pretty decent overall. The only possible problem would be the fact that you don't have any double water. Because some people love double water, and I think it does have its uses. But that's the only real downside I could see to it. And then Mr. Waffle said, Is Coliata, Stardust, and Harpy a good team? I mean, it, again, it works in the short term. But try to get more Divines and more Ancients and see if you can fit those into there. We got a times 10, isn't that nice? Game loss slash EA equals pay to win. Yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> That's, uh, that is literally DML. I mean, we know this at this point. It's not like it's unheard of knowledge that DML is a pay to win game on, on purpose full of microtransactions. We're literally opening up loot boxes right now. Like, I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> Cherry is good, it can be okay. You need more examples? What other examples could you need? You've got the information you need. You don't need to have someone say, Hello, the hunter, you need to use this team. That's not how it works. You can choose any team you want. It's just, you can make it using any dragons as long as they have the essential elements required. Like, you don't need to use a specific team that someone tells you to use. I don't actually like telling people use this dragon because you know this is supposed to be a dragon collecting game right? Like we've got hundreds and hundreds of dragons all of these codex dragons and you should be able to use any dragon that you want. The problem is fitting it into a good team so you shouldn't just use a dragon because someone tells you to use it. You should be able to use things that you want to use like some people may choose to use a suboptimal, like they might still have the divine and earth and water that they need in a team. They may still have a suboptimal team, but it's using dragons that they actually like. And I think it's really important if you actually enjoy the game to be able to use dragons that you want to use and not just using a team that someone says, use this one. You know what I mean? Have I ever spent money on DML? Yes. I'm literally level 20, VIP level 20. I've never denied spending money on DML. You can literally see that I have spent money on DML. The thing is, I only really make purchases in this game on the on sale clam. Like right now it's at full price, but when it goes on sale, it costs like two pounds. So that's like $3 ish. And you get 800 gems, but you have to collect them over 30 days. That is the only thing that I really purchase in this game. And I don't purchase it every month. I purchase it maybe once every three months on average now. And that's the only thing that I really buy in this game outside of like charity bundles or like this beachside habitat. Because this is the only thing that I can really support. Like the habitats, they do have some effect on gameplay in a sense, but they don't really affect the game like anything else. So this is a microtransaction that I can live with. I can't live with microtransactions like this. It's too much. Like, it makes me feel sick looking at them. Will I ever buy Yamad? No. Not while he is anywhere close to the price that he is. Like, if we take a look at the cost of Yamad in here, he is 7,000 gems. And you know, I probably have not even used 7,000 gems in the last year of playing this game. Like, genuinely, I probably haven't. Like, he is the cost of an entire year of gameplay for me. Because you don't need to spend ridiculous amounts of gems in this game if you know what you're doing. And 7,000 gems on an ancient fire and water ancient who doesn't even have exception stats? Super bad deal. Genuinely, you shouldn't really ever buy... Ares or Yamad. Like, Ares is somewhat useful because he's got Earth. But, like, right now we can get free divines. You can get loads of free divines right now. So, what would you rather do? Spend 600 gems like I have to guarantee Chrono Aphrodite and also get new dragons and three divines at that? Or would you rather get Ares for, like, seven times the price? 
It just doesn't make any sense to me for why I would ever want to purchase Ares and Yamad, ever. They're not useful. Oh, it's for collection, but they're not worth the cost still. If Hathor and like went on a 1v1 with no sigils, who would, who would win? Hathor and who? Hathor and like? Will Koliada come back again? There's no way to know. We can say that on average, dragons do tend to return eventually, but that's not a guarantee. So we don't know for sure if they ever will return. They might do, but you'd be banking on a maybe, not a guarantee. You're about to get Amaterasu as your first divine? Really, Amaterasu? If you're gonna get a divine as your first divine, I really do not recommend you go with Amaterasu. You should go with one of the water divines first. Like, I think it's a mistake for players to go for the the light, the light divine first. Maybe you just want to use it for its design, in which case, obviously, I'm not gonna stop you, but we had this happen with... If you remember one of the previous Divine Fests where we had Changi and Long Wang, and lots of people ended up picking up Changi because they liked the design of Changi, which is fine. If you want to be a Changi simp, go ahead. But those players struggled a lot because of that choice. If they'd have gone with the water options at the time that were available, they would have had a much better time. And a lot of players that I know actually ended up quitting the game because they realized how much of a mistake it was. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna regret your decision to buy Amaterasu, but I'm I'm just letting you know that it's definitely the suboptimal play. Like, if you wanna buy him, go ahead, but it's certainly not what I would recommend. If Hathor and Lisk went on a 1v1, yeah, Lisk would win. That's actually quite easy because Lisk could just buff twice and just insta-kill him. Because you gotta remember, especially with these ancient exceptions, they have both ancient and divine. And yeah, Bless is really strong, but do you know what's even stronger than that? Ancient Bless. As in, Zucked Bless. That's even stronger. So, uh... Hathor may have been the old powerhouse, Freya may have been one of the strongest dragons in the past, but that's not even close to true anymore. Freya doesn't even compare to, say, Lisk, Oya, and those sorts of dragons. It's not even close. What's the average time for you to get your first Ancient or Divine? There's no average. And considering that you can only really get Divines and Ancients from, like, their select events, you have to be playing during those events themselves to get them. So if a player pays attention and they start playing, say, let's say a month before this Divine event started, they could easily get their hands on all of these dragons and get Chrono Aphrodite as well. Now, if you don't pay attention and you don't log in frequently, or your life schedule doesn't work around, say, dungeon resets and things like that, you might never get one. And that's just sort of the way it is. You have to have a schedule that works with these sort of six hour resets. Otherwise, it will be much more difficult to get Divines and Ancients. If you don't have a, a schedule, job, schooling that works around this, you're probably just not going to see much success in this game. I'm not going to lie to anyone about that. That's just how this game is. For the clam, if you miss a day, will you miss out on the gems? Yes. Yes, you will. In order to get all of the total gem value, you do have to log in every single day. Now, you might be like, yeah, but I paid money for it. Well, yeah, but you have to open it every day. <laughs> That's how it is. If you miss a day of logging in, you're just going to miss out on value. So, uh, yeah, you have to at least log in every day. Yeah, Long Wang... I wouldn't say he's the bestest this water divine ever because he's got wind, but you know, having at least a water dragon is much, much better than the people that just picked up Changi. Like, just Changi dragon, she only has divine shadow and energy. And now, Changi used to be one of the best dragons in the game. 
pre-sigils Changi was genuinely one of the best dragons in the game at a time before Hathor and Freya and that came out because Changi having shadow and energy means that she got a massive boost to attack so even though she's got terrible terrible health in the old arena with how it used to work pre-sigils it was basically just more damage equals best because if you could just one shot your opponents they would never be able to touch you but when sigils came out uh, Changi got destroyed. The lack of HP on Changi and plus Shadow and energy not really being... Energy can be useful in dungeon, but Shadow doesn't really help that much. It can help during burnout dungeons a bit, but it's not an essential element. And it just meant that Changi is just not a good choice. So the people that picked up, say, Long Wang instead of Changi definitely had a major advantage. Definitely. If Lisk and Glom went on a 1v1, blah, 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 who would win? You know, in that case, it would depend on whether Glom's shadow would proc, I think, because you could always say bless and then try a new shadow element on Glom, because where's Glommy? He's not going to appear here, is he? He's going to come up as an ancient. Glommy Pommy, where are you, baby? I've lost you. Oh, God. What? Is he not appearing? Where's my Glom gone? Don't tell me I've solved Glom. Where is he? <laughs> oh no, don't tell me I've freaked him. Oh, there he is. His image isn't appearing. That's why. <clears throat> but yeah, I think for the same reason, it's like, it would depend on the procking from Glom, whether his frightened speechless works or not. If it did, then he'd probably win. What's the best element for a level 76 play? There's no singular best element in the game. You could argue that the best element is technically divine, but it's not about a single element. You need all of the key elements to have a good dungeon team because like this event is a good showcase of why. Like we have divine fest. If you don't have a good dungeon team, you're not gonna get all these altar dragons. You might get one of them at best. So that's why you need a good dungeon team. And you also need a spread out unique elements team so that you can do well in the castle event. Because if you don't have a lot of unique elements, you're not going to be able to do the castle events either, which means even less divines. And that sucks, right? I'm sure most of us want to collect as many divines and ancients as we can. So you need to have a good team. Not a single element, not a single dragon, you need a good team. Can you play DML in both PC and mobile? You can play it on both platforms, but you, if say you have a regular, you know, PC, and then you have an Android phone, you can't play on the same account. They would have to be two separate accounts. Now, if you did have a Windows phone, you would be able to actually play on both of them, I believe, on the same account. But again, it has to be the same platform type. What was my seventh favorite dragon? I don't know. I think I have a list in the Discord server. Ask, ask me anything section. I think I think there's a pin here. Um, this is a very old list from June of 2020. But like, I've got a favorite adult DML dragons list. Again, it's outdated now because we have the beautiful Citrine and others like that. Um. Apollo, really? I don't think I agree with that anymore. What the heck? Okay, ignore this list. <laughs> I just said I had a list. Ignore that list. My opinion has changed. <laughs> My opinions have changed greatly in a year. Wow. That's, that, though, that was shocking. Getting Peach as first legendary, is it good for dungeon? Don't use legendaries in the dungeon. Like I said at the beginning, of the stream today it's just the problem with legendaries even though peach is a legendary peach doesn't even help you in the dungeon like at all legendary void plant super bad element combination if you wanted to make use of them out of like make use of the peach in the dungeon to begin with but the problem is legendaries you have to pay gems to unlock their third element which is not good and the thing is, you'd want to be replacing them with Divines and Ancients anyway. So until you get Divines and Ancients, you are much better off just using Epics. 
And that's not a meme. That's not me lying. It is genuinely better for you to go and use your epics instead. Because the benefit of epic dragons is that their stats are okay. And the thing is, all of them have three elements, right? Apart from, there's, there's like two exceptions, I think. But all of these epics have three elements, which means that you can have lots of unique elements on your team. And mainly you can pick exactly the elements that you want using the exact dragons that you want. So that means that you can still do decently in the dungeon and you can use them until you get divines and ancients. So just go straight from epics to divines and ancients. I think you should skip legendary completely these days. Legendaries just don't help you very much. Why don't I like Apollo? I don't hate Apollo. I think it, I think it's just, you know, I was part of the Apollo event. We have many free baby Apollos. Um, I think it's just like anything. If you ask someone like, what's your favorite chocolate? It'd probably change after a few years, right? Or like, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite song? Your opinion is probably not gonna be the same as it was before, right? Probably gonna have a different opinion now from last year or maybe five years ago. Do I have Arya? I do not. What dragons do I wanna be created and what elements do I want it to have in base stats? I've said it before, I just want a bunch of candy dragons, which all things considered, I guess, I guess the uh, the seventh dragon is technically that, right? Technically seventh is a candy dragon. Um, but just like, I, I said at one point a candy element specifically would be interesting. But what elements and base stats, I wouldn't really want the base stats to be higher than anything we have right now. Like, ideally, I want every single dragon in the game to have some ability to, you know, fight dragons like Enroja. I know that the game isn't made like that, but I'd love for every dragon in the game to have the potential to actually fight a dragon like Enroja, even if there was only a small chance. Because as it stands in DML right now, dragons like the Fire Dragon or Ceremony will never beat them. If they're on equal terms and they'll never be on equal terms because ceremony can only use common sigils damn it strongest supporter in the game arguably bahajir arguably enroja enroja bahajir are insane how many dragons do i have with the ancient plus divine element is it three i think i've got three um i've got enroja frosk and Glom. So yeah, I think it's three. I think I've finished off three major events. I I didn't spend anything during one of them, and I think I only bought Clam in another one. But I don't buy the shrines anymore either, so that's actually not too bad. Silly Ferosky. What's your name? Emily. The strongest supporter is Nezha? Nah. Nah. Definitely either Emroja or Bahajia. Nezha technically has more elements to use, but I think having Ancient Divine plus Earth or Ancient Divine plus Water and plus the insane base stats on them compared to Nezha. Actually, we can take a look at that, can't we? If we go on to DML Planner, we can we can take a look at just how much better Emroja and Bahajir are compared to Nezha. Like, I'm not saying Nezha isn't useful. Um, isn't there a comparison somewhere? Is it here? I know that there is a way somewhere to, like, pick a dragon. Is it in here somewhere? I know that there is a comparison somewhere, but, like, if we pick Nezha and Bahajir, for example. Ah, here we go. We can do it here. So, let's look at Bahajir. No, damn it! Why? Could I not type today? There we go. Please, Ibed, stop, or I will have to actually ban you. But yeah, if we take a look at the difference between these two dragons, this is at level one. This is no enchantment. This is no sigils, anything. And just look at the difference between those two dragons. Do you see the difference? And the thing is, some people would argue that Ancient plus Divine is much more useful overall because then you have them available at any time. 
Weren't you use, forced to use Erlang Shen because the perfect metal dragon didn't come out? Yeah, basically. And then I just wanted to have metal available for the new campaign map, so that's why he's on my team. There's no other reason. But like, look at these two. Now if we pop these up to level 100, then you'll see the difference in stats. Nezha has 9 po or 4.97 billion attack. Bahajir has 6.21 billion. Nezha has 18.36 billion health. Bahajir has 20 billion. That is a huge difference in stats between these two. And it's going to be the exact same situation if we look at Emroja because they've got the same stats. And the thing is, Bahajir's heal is going to be better. Bahajir wins in every single possible way. Like, it says that uh, Bahajir is 33% offensive. That's technically not... It could be true, but it's also technically not true because Ancient may be used... Like, you have to attack to Zuck, right? But it's used to boost your blesses and your heals. So while Nezha does have three purely supportive elements, Bahajir is more useful overall. And plus, you don't really want to be using all three elements on either of these dragons, so just having the higher stats is much better. So, that's the reason why I disagree that Nezha is the best supporter in the game. It may have been true before we had Bahajirs and Imrojas in the game, but these days, these ancient dragons are just far too good. Like, look at all of them. Imroja and Bahajir compared to Nessa. Nessa doesn't even compete. But then at the same time, you have to make sure that your team can keep up with these. So you might have to keep your Imroja and Bahajir like two levels below or something. But you're never at the moment going to get better supporters than, say, these two on the right. Ever. It's just the way that it be. But, you know, that's the way that DML is. They brought out Divines that had the highest stats in the game and then they were like how can we make people want to spend more money oh yeah we'll add ancients and make them even stronger so then dragons like nessa don't even compare anymore like a difference of that much attack is redonkulous in terms of the the healing and the blessing that comes out of the team it's it's ridiculous who would win a 1v1 baha hot <laughs> baha thought Yeah, Bahajir versus Enroja, I think it would be a tough one, because one can shield and the other one can heal. The, the, the shield probably wins out, because the thing is, with the shields, if you put up the shield, you're never actually going to take any damage, right? Whereas if you can't put up a shield, you just have to bank that you can out-damage the shield. So it would depend on the actual stats of the dragons at that point. I don't know. I don't know who would actually win in a 1v1 if we were like using perfect hits. And it would also depend on the sigils, obviously. I don't know. I actually don't know. I imagine it probably would be in Roger, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, because it would be like the longest fight in known history. Would it ever end? It may never end. It, it may just go on forever. It may never end. <laughs> well, interesting, interesting thoughts on that, but I, I hope to never have to encounter that situation. Maybe you will one day in the arena, in which case I wish you the best of luck and I hope that you have a lot of patience. Just saying. But anyway, I did get through most of what I wanted to do today a long while ago, so we do have our final... Alter Divine from this event now in the form of Coliada. She's nice. She's pretty. We've got her now. Uh, it's just now we are just going to be sitting around trying to complete the rest of this castle event. Which again, if you do want to check out the... If you do want to check out the maps for this, they are all in the Discord server. You can see them from level 1 up to level 6. So thanks for Sarah for posting these and providing them for us. But, um, actually, they're the old ones. These are the new ones. My mistake. You see, because they use the same maps, it's difficult to tell sometimes. But yeah, thanks, Sarah, for posting these. These are the actual cast of them. <laughs> Not the first ones, which were for the exact same map, which is quite funny, actually. Uh, but, you know, good luck with your Christmas tree hunting. 
and uh, I hope you get to the top where the beautiful morning star is, get your hands on Isis and all those other divines. But at the same time, if you do want any other help after the stream ends, you can always join the Discord server and chat with people in there. They'll give you team advice. There's obviously the team advice section as well, which um, I can't stress enough. Please don't chat in the team advice section. This is just a place where people can post their teams and then people can give them advice on how to improve it. But the thing is, even if people give you advice, you don't have to follow it. It's just... If you want to see what people have to say, like maybe you've missed something that you need, then people will let you know. So, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have had a lot of help from asking about this. But, you know, depends. Some people don't want to post their teams anyway for one reason or another, and that's understandable. What is better option between restorative recourse and regeneration recourse? The reason being that especially if you're in the middle of the dungeon, for example, Say you're in the middle of a dungeon fight and a dragon uses shadow on you or DOT, like plant, then you can just heal it off. So it instantly cleanses, which is really strong. Now, if you have two water dragons, you can actually use regeneration on the second, but in general, it's probably a better idea to go with restorative recourse, usually. Apart from some very niche scenarios, but it's like, you can use Great Bless on your Divines as well. In very, very niche scenarios. But overall, because of how easy to use it is and how consistent it is, that's why Mass Blessing is better. Because then rather than you having to worry about turn orders and blessing all the time, you just use one Mass Bless, it lasts for two whole turns, your entire team is protected. So it just takes away, especially if you get frightened or anything, this stops you from potentially losing a run as often. But, anywho, like I said, I'm going to skedaddle for now. I hope that some of this info was useful while we're in the last week of this Divine Fest, because while we may have gone over most of this information five billion times at this point, you know, we get new people in, and plus at the same time, we're going to probably have an ancient event soon enough, which is going to be, it's going to be useful during that as well. All of the stuff that I'm saying because, you know, most, well, all of the ancient events that we've had before pretty much also rely on the dungeon and doing well in the dungeon. So I can't stress enough these days. It didn't used to be the case, but how important it is to just have a good team ready. But, you know, no matter how many times I warn people, they'll still not understand until they get screwed over first. <laughs> not everyone, obviously, but we try our best, right? Why does the Jamad Dragon have such low base stats? Because it's bad. The, the, the balancing in this game, I have to say, is uh, probably one of the worst parts of it by far. And if Yamad was actually decent, people would buy it. But then at the same time, I'm kind of glad that Yamad doesn't have ridiculous stats. Because if Yamad did have, like, really strong stats, people would believe that, it, well, if you don't have Yamad, you're going to lose. So the game's just paid to win, right? So I kind of do like the fact that he isn't very strong, if that makes sense. I don't think he should be this expensive, but I think it's better that he be like this rather than us putting, say, enrogers behind paywalls like this. Take your name. What? I don't want to take your name. I have my own name. I want my own name, please. But anyway, my throat is struggling, so uh, for now, I do wish you the best in your DML journeys. This VOD should be up soon if you want to go and rewatch anything, as see us patching Coliada or just going through the castle event maps again. But I appreciate you joining me, and uh, good luck in your endeavours, whether they be DML, IRL, or anything else. Do the boss dragons money boost stack? Yes. Yes, they do, Tram. But, anywho... Adios, Ibad, and everyone else. Enjoy your day or night, and I do hope I can see you soon.